All right, today we're going to be talking about the NFL free agency and trades. We're going to start with the Saquon Barkley move to the Eagles. I want to see what you guys' opinion is on that. Um, I think it's a good move for him. Uh, he grew up in the Philadelphia area, he went to high school there, and uh, when he went to college, he went to Penn State. Uh, so, stayed in the in Pennsylvania, and uh, I think it was a personal move to go to Eagles for him, but also a good move because I think that might get them over the hump and uh, possibly compete for another championship. Um, like Jackson kind of said, he went back to Philadelphia where he grew up and went to college, and yep. Yeah, and I think that offense is going to be pretty unstoppable now with Saquon Barkley in the backfield. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a big change for the Giants fans, getting them into the conference, so. Yeah. Um, never fun having your own player go compete for uh, a different division rival. And uh, uh, my sister Carter is actually a big Saquon Barkley fan, so she's now an Eagles fan, she informed me of, so. Well, you know, she has better offense now, better defense as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Their defense is going to have to make some more moves this offseason, you know. Yeah. Looking at a couple guys in the draft, um, their secondary needs help. They could not tackle this year, and I think that's what held them back. But uh, obviously losing Jason Kelsey is also going to be huge for the Eagles, filling that role. Fletcher Cox retired, stuff like that. So they still got their work cut out for them on the defensive end. Yeah, and they went ahead and got rid of Kevin Byard in the secondary. Yeah. Did he have a... He went to Chicago. Yeah, yep. So that, that adds something to the Chicago defense that they kind of needed. Yeah, and then um, Swift joined them in Chicago. So I felt like Swift did enough last year for the Eagles. But um, I think the Bears have been in some help at the running back position. And uh, teaming him up with Caleb Williams, I think, will do really well. Um, but he obviously not going to beat the Packers. He was kind of off and on last year, like... Had him on my fantasy team, he'd do really good, and then the next day he'd score a point. Yeah, he's one of those players who you, he either has to be really good or really bad, and he just can't make either cut. Yeah. What do you think about the Aaron Jones to the Vikings? Um, personally, I think that uh, it's hard to go from playing for a franchise for seven years to then go and playing for their rival. Um, I feel like when you play for a team that long, you build a hate for your division rivals. So I don't understand how you can just take a one-year deal to prove yourself for one of your division rivals. So it's a little confusing, but I can also see he felt maybe backstabbed in a way. He finished here with five straight games of 100 rushing yards or more for the Packers. And uh, for agency, we go out and get Josh Jacobs. Um, I think maybe he felt betrayed a little bit, so maybe that's why he went to Minnesota. I think uh, it's going to take him a while to kind of make some friends in Minnesota with how much, like how big of rivals they are. It's going to be a long process for him. Yeah, and I know that Easton is a Packers fan, so it's kind of an upset to him probably. And they used A.J. Dillon more, so I mean it kind of makes sense. Yeah. No, I think I think the Josh Jacobs to the Packers is huge for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Xavier McKinney on the defensive side, too. Yeah. Um, I think he's a stud. He is definitely underrated, in my opinion. I, I can agree with that. I can. So it'll be an exciting year for the Packers. Jordan Love getting another year under his belt. Um, I think next year the Packers are going to maybe be really good. Yeah, the Packers might have a chance next year. Yep. As long as they can settle in and do what they need to do. And in my opinion, like, with the Vikings getting Sam Darnold and cutting Kirk Cousins, that is something big that's happened. Because Kirk Cousins was supposed to be their franchise quarterback for years to come. Yeah. And then they, put him, they got rid of him to the Falcons. So right there, that's like a big move for Kirk. So working at the NFC South, who do you guys think can win that division now with Kirk Cousins on the Falcons 
do you think Baker Mayfield can have another good year like he did this year? Like, what's your opinion on the NFC South? I think Baker might stay good this year, but if he doesn't win the com the division this year, it's going to be probably the Falcons because the Falcons have a bunch of young receivers and Bijan on the offense. Their defense isn't very loaded, but they will make it work. I think that Baker Mayfield and the Bucks will probably take it, but I just think Baker Mayfield is a, he just, he doesn't have anything like, he doesn't run, he doesn't pass, he does both, and he knows how to do them both, so. Yeah. I personally believe that um, with the star power and the youngness of the Atlanta Falcons, bringing in a veteran quarterback that knows how to win, knows how to get it done, um, and Kirk Cousins, I think that with Arthur Smith out as head coach, um, they can look to their playmakers more because he did not. You got Drake London as a wide receiver who really, really underperformed last year. Kyle Pitts hasn't done much since his rookie year. Um, Bijan. And then you got Bijan Robinson who didn't even get majority of the carries last year to Tyler Algier. But um, I think um, I think they'll do good next next year with Kirk coming in and being a veteran and knowing how to get it done. So Sam Darnold and the Vikings, I think that's a downgrade for the Vikings at quarterback because they have Joshua Dobbs and now Sam Darnold. S Joshua Dobbs and Sam Darnold aren't the greatest quarterbacks. We have seen that in the past few years. But Sam Darnold needs to get his head in the game if he wants the Vikings to compete this year. They have a bunch of young players that they can use if they get Sam Darnold to play right. You want to add to that? Um... I don't know. It's just kind of, it's weird. I don't know if the Packers are going to be really good with Josh Jacobs, but he'll definitely be a... We were talking about the Vikings. Yeah, we were talking about the Vikings. Oh. Uh, Sam Darnold and the Vikings. I think that Joshua Dobbs did really good for a couple weeks, and then he just kind of fell off, but I'm not really sure about that one. I think uh, Sam Darnold proved himself last year as a backup quarterback. And uh, I think that's why Minnesota brought him in, was to do just that, back up the quarterback that they will be drafting this year and uh, be a mentor to him. I bet they either trade up and take uh, Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. I don't see them trying to draft or trying to trade up into the top five to take, uh, let's say, Drake May. I mean, I mean, in my opinion, that's what I would do, but you're going to have to give up a lot to give up to get one of those top five draft spots. Um, so I think they'll have to settle with Bo Nix from Oregon or Michael Penix Jr., which are both good quarterbacks. They're just a little on the older side, but that might be to the benefit of the Minnesota Vikings, yeah. like trying to win now. I agree. I agree. One move from the Panthers that I don't know if I agree with is Brian Burns to the Giants. That one is kind of weird because Brian Burns was their their sack leader last season. So without him, what's their defense going to be? Um, exactly what they were this year. Garbage. Um, <laughs> the Panthers, I think with this, like with not re-signing Burns, um, I think it shows that they're in full rebuild mode and they're going to try to do everything through the draft. Maybe this year they try to pick up a big target. We'll see. Um, they obviously just one day one and a half days gone now of the um, NFL free agency. So I think maybe they try to make a move, but they're in full rebuild mode. I say if in the draft they try to target line, linemen for um, Bryce Young because he hasn't had any opportunity to show himself yet. Yeah, I do think Bryce Young, if he can get a line this year, will be a stud. Yeah. I'm on the other side. Um, I think he is too small. Um, I I believe that you got to be a bigger, a taller guy to be able to play quarterback. Um, I mean, Russell Wilson did it for many years, but like now he's not able to perform. Like he can't see over his offensive line, and Bryce Young's running into the same problems. But Russell Wilson made it happen a lot of years in Seattle, won a couple of Super Bowls. So. And the same thing with Kyler Murray. Like he's a shorter quarterback. He relies on his legs to get yeah. away from, and then get the ball downfield. Yep. 
And then, have you guys heard of the Mac Jones trade? For yeah, the I was going to say, uh, Mac Jaguars? Jones. Yeah. Um, he's now taken his role as being the uh, quarterback two. He's going to back up Trevor Lawrence. I think it's a good move for him. He's not a starting quarterback, in my opinion. He had the potential coming out of Bama, but honestly, Nick Saban's program in Bama just never really produced star quarterbacks. I mean, they had Jalen Hurts that season. Yeah. But Jalen Hurts eventually transferred out to Oklahoma. Yeah. So, I mean, you could kind of say it, but, and then Tua. Tua is the best quarterback to come out of Saban's program in a while, so. Who do you guys think will be the best quarterback next year? Best quarterback next year? I don't really know. I want to say Patrick Mahomes just because he's been, like, on that constant tear on every defense and every team he's played against. But he needs some receivers. Like, yeah. that's their big problem. I think if uh, the sophomore wide receivers for Green Bay can uh, step up and uh, prove themselves again this year and show that they can be consistent, I think Jordan Love has a good shot at being the best quarterback. I think he could win MVP. I think I saw his odds as like plus 5,000 right now. So if you're going to take that line, I'd do it. Yeah, I can agree. I agree with Jackson. Yeah. What were some other moves this just yesterday? There was a lot of moves. Yeah. Um, I know we're forgetting. Tony Pollard to the yeah, Titans and Derrick Henry to the Cowboys is where he, he's playing on signing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. I figured after Tony Pollard went to the Titans, I kind of thought maybe they would just flip, but yeah. we still got to wait to see if Derrick Henry makes his official decision. And Russell Wilson went to the Steelers to play quarterback. Yeah. And I mean, they might ha they might go over the top this year with a veteran quarterback and their young roster around him. He might lead them to a winning a winning streak. I know that Mike Tomlin brings them to a win a winning season every season. Yeah. But they don't have that quarterback to get them over the hump. Yeah. And I think they fail to get over the hump again. Um, I think they could be a playoff team, a low seed. You know, another winning record. You know, Mike Tomlin knows just how to do that, how to get at least nine wins. Um, but I don't think Russell Wilson's going to bring them to that next level. I honestly think he gets benched this year for Kenny Pickett again. So. Yeah, I don't think they give up on Kenny Pickett yet this year. Like, I know Russell Wilson has had his good seasons, but he's out of that. He's like 33 years old. He can't really do a lot. But with Pickett being a smaller quarterback, I think Wilson wasn't only brought in to you know get his last good couple of years of NFL action, like to play, but to also mentor, and I think he could be a good mentor to a smaller Kenny Pickett quarterback. I can agree with that. Russell Wilson can kind of, he knows, he's a smaller quarterback, so I think he'll be able to teach Kenny Pickett how he can be a good, smaller quarterback. But because it has receivers to make them go all the way. They just need that quarterback position, because their duo between J Jalen Warren and Najee Harris is a pretty good running back, Joe. Yeah. You have the big the big guy and the fast guy. And then our defense with Minka in the, in the secondary and T.J. Watt coming at the quarterback every time. Yeah. Their defense is yeah. good. Yeah, their defense is really good. It's going to be pretty scary, but. I think they can do it. Yeah. They can have a chance. If they can, if their defense performs, I think they'll be a decent team. What do you guys think about Austin Eckler leaving the Chargers to go to the Commanders. That one was very surprising yes. to me. I thought he was an absolute stud in Los Angeles on the Chargers. But it's been kind of confusing, this this free agency, just with all the running backs making moves. They're trying to get paid, and they're trying to make a point that the running back position is not dying out. Because mm -hmm. the receivers are just getting better and better, and the running backs are for getting forgot about. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what Austin Eckler sees in this opportunity, is that they can see that the running back is getting better. I do think that uh, Austin Eckler will be a uh, better running back on the Commanders if their line can help him out a little bit. But I feel like on the Chargers, they, they went to Austin Eckler a lot, but they just kind of like shifted away from him a little bit. And I think on the Commanders, he'll be pretty good. I think with uh, Brand Staley out as head coach in Los Angeles, it just confused me because you're bringing in Harbaugh, who just, you know, he was like Blake Corum, for example, at Michigan, was in his program. You know, he loved Corum. Um, 
didn't throw the ball a lot with J.J. McCarthy. And so I felt like, you know, Austin Eckler was finally going to get his chance with Harbaugh in as head coach. Um, I guess he didn't see it that way. And then I also feel like when people think of injuries, they think of um, FedEx Field in Washington. At least I think it's still FedEx Field. It is FedEx mm -hmm. Field. Um, a lot of injuries happen there, and Austin Eckler is pretty injury prone. And so it was a weird move seeing that now he's going to play eight or nine home games there. And, uh, yeah. And he's more of a receiving back. He's not really yeah. a, that running back that the commanders need. Yeah. I want to get you guys' opinion on where you think Joe Flacco will end up this season. Because he's a free agent. I I think that um, Joe Flacco was some old man luck. Uh, I don't think he's able to produce again like he did this year. And I think that started to show towards the end of the year. You know, He came in, his stats were really good, he was performing, and it slowly died off, and then it, at Come playoff time, it really dropped off against the Texans, and that defense lit him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Texans they went full rebuild mode last year. They got rid of most of their good players, and they just kept like two or three, and then put in Tank Dell and C.J. Stroud plus Will Anderson on the defense. What do you guys think about C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell? I think on the Texans, I think they're the best wide receiver, uh, wide receiver quarterback duo for a long time. Like they're the Gronk and Tom Brady. Just the, you know, Tank Dell is probably a more well-rounded receiver. I can agree with that. I don't know if I can go that far yet. Um, I definitely think they have the possibility to be that good. Um, still a lot to prove. You know, Tank Dell's got to prove that he can stay healthy. Um, I'm really big on C.J. Stroud. I think that he could be in the MVP conversation this year. He almost was last year. Um, but he's got some more to prove in my opinion. Yeah, I can agree. I wouldn't say that C.J. Stroud is a, a Tom Brady yet and Tank Dell being a Rob Gronkowski, but I can think that maybe in a couple of years he will be very good, C.J. Stroud will, but I'm not sure about Tank Dell. I think if he performs and stays healthy and can keep producing what he is, I think then he'll be good. But Yeah, and with his injury in the playoffs this season, like, what's he going to be next season? Yeah. So I get where you guys are at. Where the moves were there? Um. The franchise tag on Jalen Johnson for the Bears. Do you think it's a good franchise tag to be used? Because he's in the secondary. He's a cornerback. I... I don't know. I'm not huge on franchise tags because it seems like all all players have just turned it into I'm not going to play for you if you franchise tag me. I want my money, and so if you franchise tag me, I'm not going to play. And that's exactly what T. Higgins is doing. T. Higgins has now um, requested a trade from the Bengals. Um, Luckily, the Colts were able to come to a, an agreement with Michael Pittman and set franchise tagging him. So, you know, I'm not a big guy on tra on franchise tagging people because nobody wants to play under it. Yeah. yeah. What is your uh, about like next year about these guys that are coming back? Like, what do you think uh, about um, like Jamar Chase? What do you think he'll be next year? Or Joe Burrow? Yeah. With him, his injury. I think Joe Burrow will pick, off, pick up right where he left off. Um, he'll, st he'll still be the guy. Um, yeah. Joe Shiesty. I mean, he'll get them back in the Super Bowl contention, and I think in the, the Bengals will be just fine. The I was Bengals, thinking about... Uh, they cut Joe Mixon. That's, they got in Zach Moss from the Colt, Colts. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I technically agree with that one, because that's kind of a bad move. Because Joe Mixon is the running back for them. Like is that another Derrick Henry landing spot? P possibly. Possibly, yeah. Because Zach Moss isn't the greatest running back. Okay. We still have no idea where Jonathan Taylor's going to end up because yeah. we haven't heard any news from him. So if like if the Colts don't get a co running back, what are their offense going to be? It's going to be like it was last year. It's going to be not good at all. Shambles. Are, you said the Colts? Yeah, the Colts. I don't know. I, I'm pretty big on Anthony Richardson. Um, 
if he can stay healthy. You know, he he tried to prove that he can use his feet a lot last year, the first four games, and uh, that ruined his season. That took him out of the rest of the season and put in Gardner Minshew, who's now going to the Raiders. Um, but I'm really big on um, AR-15. He's good. Uh, he's got a lot to prove, though. You know, staying healthy. Talking about like injured guys, what do you guys think of Justin Jefferson next year? Jefferson, he got a lot of injuries last season. Yeah, it, I think he kind of fell off might, last year, but he might come back next season. But he's going to need to put in the work to get like a little bit of stronger frame that way he doesn't get injured as much. I do agree. I think that uh, he just this or uh, this coming season he's going to need to be uh, he's going to definitely need a lot of more practice if he wants to help the Vikings go to a championship, but I definitely do not think the Vikings will be um, going to the championship this year just because of Kirk Cousins being gone and they're getting back Justin Jefferson, but not who he was before in the past years. Yeah, and Jordan Madison kind of st had to step up last yeah. season. And he's not a big wide receiver who can do like... he's. He's not the yes. shortest receiver. He's like not five nine like Tyree Kill. He is decent size, but they need that more. They can't just go to one person. Yeah, is what I'm trying to get. Yeah, because KJ Osborne didn't get used at all. They didn't use like any other other receivers. They'll just hand the ball off or throw it to him. I think the big thing about the Vikings last year was um, Kirk Cousins proved that without Jefferson he could win, but you know Jefferson without Cousins he couldn't win. So. We'll see. Um, I think it sucks a lot for the Vikings to lose Cousins. Um, and depending on who they get in the draft, I mean, I think if they go with Bo Nix, Jefferson will have an okay year. But if they take Penix, I mean, I could see Jefferson having a really good year because of, like, Penix has a cannon. Yeah. He throws it fast and far. Is it Jordan McDaniels, the LSU quarterback? I think if, like, the Vikings can get him, That'd be a pretty good yeah. option. Um, I think Jaden McDaniels, he'll go top five. Um, a lot of quarterbacks are going in that in those first couple slots. Um, I know Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, the receiver out of Ohio State, he'll go early. I think he might fall to the Cardinals because that's what they're trying to get to. Yeah. Um, then you got... Um, Jaden McDaniels, obviously. Yeah, he's Drake May. Yeah, Drake May, I think, is going to be a very good quarterback if he can get to the right team and, you know, get a good mentor to teach him how to move around and be in the NFL. Because, like, we have to look back to Mahomes' rookie season. Like, he didn't get any playing time. He, he sat the bench for three years behind Alex Smith. And look what Mahomes became. I mean, you look at Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre, mm -hmm. yeah. and then Jordan Love sat behind Rodgers. I think that's that's the way to go. You got to get the mentors. Yes. Some sometimes when those mentors aren't available, you got to do what the Vikings are going to have to do, and you're going to have to draft a rookie and just let him play. Yeah. I do th agree with Jackson a lot. Brett Favre, a great quarterback, and then to come. Aaron Rodgers, who was sitting on the bench under Brett Favre, and then you get another good quarterback like Jordan Love. It's just, and then after Jordan Love, there's probably going to be another one. It's just they're repeating the cycle. Yeah, you always like keep your quarterbacks, and that's a good thing when you're in the NFL is to have a great quarterback. But you need that great quarterback to be mentored by, like a, a great quarterback, a great quarterback, or even a mid quarterback, because then they can see what's going wrong and try to get over that and get better yeah. than that. Because Alex Smith was not ever the greatest quarterback. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure we all know that. Alex Smith was kind of mid. But, and Mahomes has became, like, what, top two in the NFL quarterback position all time. Yeah. I think the Super Bowl puts him at second all time. Which is crazy to think about because he's, he's got at least ten more seasons to play. Mm -hmm. He's 28 years old. He has three rings. That's crazy. Like, he's a – he's just – people don't really like him because – He's, I mean, a lot of people love him, but he gets babied by the ref, they say. But either way, I do think he's a great quarterback. And I think when he is done with his 10 more years or however more, however much longer he plays, he'll definitely be the best quarterback. But Yeah. yeah. 
I think I look at it a lot like I look at Tom Brady. Um, not a guy I want to face in the playoffs, you know, regular season, whatever. But playoffs, I don't want my team to face him, which Packers only have to see them in the Super Bowl. So hopefully somebody beats them before we have to play them. Um, but he's just great, you know. You don't have to like him. You don't have to love him. You shouldn't hate him, but you got to respect him. Like I mean, you, you know he's that great quarterback. Yeah. You can you can hate on him all you want, like, but you know he's the best quarterback this these next few seasons. Yeah. You gotta at least respect his name. Yeah. I mean, he he's proved himself. He's 20 years old, three rings, like you said. He's got a lot more to come, I think. So. Yes. I think that people don't realize how good he is because they're just thinking about like what other stuff that he's doing and stuff like that. But I like don't know. he took down both the Niners defense and the Ravens defense in both the playoffs. And that Ravens and Niners defense is the top two in the NFL. Yeah. That's like a really big thing because he doesn't have any receivers. It's just him and Kelsey on that offense. So he has to make things work. Because Isaiah Pacheco is he's a good running back, but I don't know if he's a running back in the long run. Yeah, do you, that's what I was going to say. Do you think. Uh, Anybody goes to Kansas City? Joe Mixon, uh, Derrick Henry. I think. And where does Derrick Henry land? Yeah, I think Derrick Henry will probably go to Dallas. Because if you put Derrick Henry in that Dallas offense, there is going to be unstoppable. I yeah, think, I agree. Yeah. I do think that uh, Derrick Henry and um, Tony Pollard kind of switch some things up. I think uh, Derrick Henry or Joe Mixon, but um, I think that one of them. Or somebody is going to end up going to the Chiefs, but the Chiefs might find like a late pick running back because yeah. that's what they've been doing a lot is finding that late pick running back and turning him into a stud like Puka Nakua. What he about was, Isaiah Davis? Isaiah Davis. Davis. Yeah. Puka Nakua came out of nowhere. He was a very late round draft pick. Yeah, and I think uh, I think Joe Mixon is probably not going to end up on the Chiefs, but I think he's. He might end up in that division. Yeah, I think like he's going to end up going to... He might go to the Broncos or the Raiders, which is where I see him laying, I see him laying at the Raiders. I don't see him. Yeah, I, f- I can really forget right about the Raiders. The, the Raiders, Raiders need to pick someone up yeah, now. Yeah, the Raiders need a running back. They uh, go. They went ahead and got rid of uh, Josh Jacobs, the Packers, mm-hmm. as we said earlier. So that's going to be like something they need to find. Mm-hmm. And if they can find the right deal with Joe Mixon, I think that's where it'll land. Yep. Yeah. Pretty good, uh, pretty good yeah. spot for him. I do think that with all the trades that are happening, next season will be very fun and interesting to see how everything goes out. But I don't know. It's just a lot right now. There are a bunch of people moving around, people going free agency. And then the draft is still to come. Like there are a lot of big changes, I do think. And there's going to be some great ones, and then there's going to be some that I don't think ever should have happened. But, you know. Yeah. All right, well, I think we talked about... Pretty much everything. Yeah. So thank you for joining us, Jackson. Yep. We appreciate it, so have a good day.